Hey guys, and here we are back with the community episode number two. In this particular case, a space where we take some questions and then try to answer them as best as I can right over here. And also a kind of video where I can relax a little bit with uh, some of you guys and interact in a different way and trying to have a little bit more fun and try to um, communicate in a different way than just the reviews itself. Now this is the second episode and we are going to do in a different way that we did uh, the first one because we are changing things here and there and adjusting and let's start with uh, the questions so that we don't take too long and starting with a few um, six in total but starting with the uh, uh, a quick one which is the, from Arginaldo Fernando D Andrade thumbs up for you man right over there hi Roberto in your opinion is the Minix Z64 faster with Windows 10 or Windows 8.1 what is the best what has the fastest boot time thank you and thank you and thumbs up for you now in general not just the Minix Z64 my opinion is that uh, any machine will boot a little bit faster than Windows 8.1 it's nothing uh, major but a little bit um, so yeah going uh, for this question going really quickly is go to Windows 10 and you will be with a faster boot time and in my opinion of course a little bit better experience in overall now going back to Windows 7 a few years ago um, I was one of the first to uh, to jump to Windows 8 and one of the things that I did enjoy uh, was the fast boot time and the overall responsiveness of Windows 8 compared to Windows 7. Now guys have in mind I know that a lot of you uh, used Windows 7 just up to uh, till recently and some of you are still with Windows 7. I completely understand that I don't judged you uh, and I understand all the reasons that you try to explain but also try to understand that my side of things is that one of the the, the major features that uh, led me to jump from Windows 7 to Windows 8 back then was the boot time was uh, much lighter than Windows 7 although they have pros and cons in both of them so Windows 8 and then later on a uh, Windows 8.1 and uh, I don't know when but uh, yeah Windows 10 on every machine that I have uh, with Windows. So, Arginaldo, go with Windows 10, in my opinion, and you will be just fine uh, and faster than, than Windows 8.1. Now, the OVO, which in Portuguese means egg. I'm not sure if that is, but um, his question is, all I want is free TV show movies and emulators. Oh, I remember this. Uh, yeah, by the way, I don't prepare the questions. I do save them on the cloud and then um, the day that I record, I just place them here on my desktop and that is it. I shoot them here. So, uh, all I need is Android box with Kodi with configured options, right? Which boxes come with Kodi configured already? I remember now why I did choose this question. Or do I gotta buy a box and find a YouTube video on how to configure Kodi? So guys, uh, what I do here on the channel, especially on the Android TV boxes, is I do test the hardware uh, and I don't test add-ons. Uh, I've had a lot of invitations to feature add-ons and feature this and feature that I refuse them all and I will keep refusing uh, any box that comes to the channel that has add-ons pre-installed I will not show them I did that once about two years ago I think I did not um, mess around with the add-ons but I mentioned it as add-ons pre-installed that was a mistake for me I shouldn't have done it and I will not take down the video because I'm proud of all my videos but some of them have mistakes and that was one of them and the explanation is very simple add-ons most of the times will cripple any box you may have a great box and then um, installing add-ons uh, will make that device especially the experience with Kodi really bad and this is the advice that I give to everyone and I had a question receiving today about a machine that cost 350 euros with the AM Logic S900 five uh, similar to machines that we can buy for 50 euros and the only reason that it costs 350 euros and this is a good example for OVO and everyone else that is listening the only difference is that it comes loaded with add-ons and you are playing paying 300 euros more well not euros was dollars sorry I'm um, was dollars but it is a huge a huge difference and you will risk to have a machine that will not behave correctly with those add-ons so we have two situations here first of all if you want to use add-ons my advice is I don't have nothing against them I have that in mind everyone is free to use the device as they do I'm a simple guy I use Kodi cleanup with my movie and series library on my Nash back there I hope you know 
you are not seeing back there <laughs> back there and all my movies are streamed to uh, my different machines around the house that is it no add-ons only the add-ons that come pre-installed with the clean version of Kodi that is it but I do not judge anyone using add-ons and that is all okay uh, by me uh, nonetheless my experience is that a lot of add-ons will make your Kodi experience a I'm not going to say the word, but really bad. Uh, so have that in mind. I do receive a lot of feedback saying, hey, Robert, this box does not work well. And it's not the box. It is, uh, it's jammed with add-ons and add-ons. And when you turn Kodi on, the response will be slow. The experience will be bad. And the blame will be either Kodi and the box, but the fault is of the add-ons. So guys, have this in mind. When this happens, remove that Kodi installation install a pure and a clean uh, installation of Kodi from the Google Play Store and you will see that your experience is totally different. So answering to OVO uh, in a <laughs> different manner and sorry that <laughs> I get a bit excited with these matters but uh, answering in a, a different manner you have two options here. If you are decided that you want to load your machines with add-ons then my suggestion is get a machine that you think it's worth it for the price. Check some reviews. I'm not the only guy sharing reviews about Android TV boxes. Check them all and see the one that you think that it is according to your budget and according to the performance that you want. That is it. Then you will find an, a lot of videos, as I mentioned, uh, teaching you how to install whatever you want and then you can test, see if it works, if it works great. If not, the only thing that you wasted was a couple of hours or a few days, it depends, of your life, but you didn't waste money uh, giving money to people that is just installing add-ons in cheap machines and then uh, putting a, a, a huge price um, to sell um, that machine. And that is it. And if you ask me, hey Robert, why don't you have any machine like that here on the channel? Because I refuse to review them all uh, when I see a machine that the only thing that has different is add-ons from another machine and 50 or 100 euros on the top. And that's not good value uh, for me, for the channel or for my viewers. So that's the reason that I refuse. That's the reason that I go against it. And that's the reason that I don't care if you buy it or not, but at least this is my opinion okay i think i did waste a little bit more time than i wanted with this question but it's not an easy question and it's it's a topic that um, some people will like to hear some people won't but i don't care it is my opinion and while we live on the live on a free world uh, at least well this part of the world it's free. Uh, I will state my opinion as is. Now, going to Tiago B. Gomes, uh, he asks, can I plug a Bluetooth adapter on this device? He is referring to the next box A95X uh, and then to configure connected PS3 or Xbox 36 uh, controller. No, the answer is no. Uh, I have tried in a couple of machines that came with no Bluetooth and have this in mind, all my reviews when there's a device that has no Bluetooth, it is a negative point. So I will always focus that. I so far only had two machines with no Bluetooth. That was the z x one and the uh, Nextbox A95X. I did try with the Bluetooth uh, adapter, which until recently was around here, I don't know where it is right now, uh, did plug it in, no Bluetooth. Android does not recognize. It works on OS X, it works on Windows, that Bluetooth adapter, but it will not work on those two Android machines. So my advice is, guys, before you buy any machine, check if you want to use Bluetooth in the future, either for a gamepad, either for a headset or something like that, um, pay a few dollars more and get a machine with Bluetooth built in because you will not be able to do it later on. So Tiago, that is it. That is a simple question and a simple answer. Now from Jason, he has an interesting question. Uh, well, all of them are interesting. That's why uh, they are here. And there are a lot more. Don't start bashing. There are a lot more interesting, but I could not bring them uh, all to the video. So getting back to Jason, he says, hey, Robert, I'm looking in, uh, to install a device into our motel rooms as a means for guests to stream online without purchasing all new smart televisions, not too keen on spending hundreds per room. I understand that. Um, I'm looking at keeping basic software on the system for guests to play their media from portable devices and allow them to stream Netflix, etc., etc., etc. Do you think the uh, A95X would be suitable? 
I already answered to Jason. We had a nice conversation uh, a few days with uh, questions and answers and so on and so forth. And the um, conclusion is that Jason will not go this route. Uh, my suggestion was not to go this route. I do love Android TV boxes, but I know that uh, a lot of people will not know how to work with them. Um, and a motel or hotel or something like that, uh, there are a lot of guests uh, guests, sorry, <laughs> with different uh, ages, and let's say that you got you have uh, a Roberto there or someone like you on that side of the screen that knows how to work with an Android TV box. That will be great. Hey, these guys here have an Android TV box with Netflix, and that's it. But let's imagine that. Um, some older folks like uh, with the same age of my parents and your parents and so on and so forth go to the hotel or something like that and they find an Android TV box they will not know how to use it even if we have a basic configuration with just Kodi for example or just Netflix that we turn on the device and with the uh, an app called Start uh, Startup it will start up the Netflix app and all we need to do is that there will be times that the app will not work correctly it will uh, reboot and and the client will know will not know what to do and that will lead to wasting time of uh, the people that work there and if you have a lot of rooms that will mean a lot of time a lot of time wasted from your staff and the cost will be higher uh, than buying smart TVs or any other kind of TV to have in a room so this is my opinion guys Android TV boxes are great but not for everyone I've tested that with my parents it is not easy <laughs> even if you try it is not easy they will learn but uh, and they will love it but it will take time for a place like an hotel where people will spend three four five nights two weeks doesn't matter it is different you won't have that time and the patience to explain you have this and the client will not have that patience so avoid avoid those complaints Let's just get the smart TVs simple things up down channel volume up and that is it don't don't complicate things so a thumbs up for Jason and it was a, it was an interesting an interesting um, question and I'm really glad that you went with that solution glad especially for you because I will not be answering the complaints <laughs> from the client so thumbs up now with uh, M boy master M boy master is asking if uh, it is okay to edit 1080 30 frames per second videos on Final Cut Pro in uh, the MacBook Pro 12 inch uh, and the answer is yes I did already uh, this is a common question um, I did publish a video with the video editing performance of the MacBook uh, which is uh, as many of you say and even and I, uh, for the price in terms of specs it, re it is really low but a lot of people love it my wife for example I did give one for her to her for her needs is enough she loves that device it is uh, it's difficult to explain these things but now going to the video editing part uh, Final Cut Pro is one of the best softwares in my opinion once again in uh, the Apple ecosystem and it will use um, any machine very weak software uh, and it will render the videos in a very pleasant way and fast and the experience will be really nice so the MacBook will be able to render videos in Final Cut. Now if you want a machine that will be able also to use After Effects, Premiere and so on and so forth, I already showed that the MacBook it's not the machine for that because they are uh, it's apps that consume a lot of hardware, they need powerful machines. The MacBook is not a powerful machine, it is slick, it is really well designed, it has a really nice battery performance, a nice um, portability, really lightweight, a nice uh, display, but it's not a powerful machine. Uh, so for Final Cut Pro, uh, Final Cut Pro, great and similar softwares, but for Adobe Suite and so on and so forth, just forget about. So think well where your future will lead. If you are thinking about just using Final Cut Pro, go ahead. If not, uh, then think about we just did review a machine with the same price point the MSI GS70 Stealth Pro uh, which is a bit noisy when we are pushing but it has a, a NVIDIA GTX 970M um, i7 quad core CPU 16 gigabytes of RAM SSD plus a one terabyte hard drive and is a completely different machine from the MacBook more heavy but in terms of performance it can do everything that a desktop can the MacBook on the other hand no and the price is the same so this will depend on uh, what you are trying to achieve the type of software that you need and so on and so forth and that is it that is it and we have one more question from Matthew um, 
Marciarelli, I hope I'm pronouncing it well. Uh, I, if I set up an SSD as my boot drive, uh, will I be able to access the data on the HDD and use it as my internal drive as storage? So we are talking about the iMac um, that has a internal hard drive, which was the case that I did purchase my wife's, which is on the back and you can see it right over there. Um, and later on I did install an SSD. And yes, you can, Matteo, you can uh, use the internal drive and you can even, as I did, uh, partition the drive, one portion for um, backups. I did also one portion for a clone, exact clone of the external SSD. So if anything happens to the SSD, which so far I have two year, that computer for two years using an external SSD and no problems. But if anything happens, I've got a partition there with a clone from the SSD. So that means that I can boot immediately after if the SSD goes mad and the other partition you can use for data you can use for time machine you can use for anything that you like this is the great advantage um the best solution is when we buy the iMac, which I'm not buying one now, but if, if, we want, if we are in the market for one, just get the SSD right from the factory. Pay the extra and get the pure PCI SSD from Apple. If we already have the iMac, then the best solution is the external SSD and you can do everything that we just stated right now. And that was the last question. We are with about 17 minutes right now and let's wrap up this video. So guys, this was the second episode about the community uh, where we have some questions from the community and I try to answer them as I can and as you uh, probably, for those at least that stayed till the end of the video, uh, just watched. Guys, um, that is it. Uh, um, hopefully this video was helpful in some way. Don't forget to leave your comments down below, uh, things that you would like to see featured here, another questions, uh, I don't know, anything that you would like. As always, uh, feel free to write whatever you want. Guys, that is it. As always, my name is Roberto George. Don't forget that usual thumbs up and I'll see you on the next one.